The year was 1977. I don't know if you remember it, but I do. Outside of Akron, Ohio, we had a blizzard. School was canceled for two weeks. That was a good day. <laughs> However, I couldn't get out of the door. That was a bad day. But it's nothing to the day of this story. We go to far away Japan of long, long ago. There was a woodsman, an older woodsman, and a younger woodsman. The older woodsman would come by and say, let me show you how to do this. I'm getting up there in, in age, but I know how to do things. Come. And just then, it was a gentle wind. Come, I'll show you the proper place to cut the trees. And the young man, who was very, very young, if you don't believe me, if you looked into his eyes, it was almost like the eyes of a deer, a doe. Eyes that you could get lost in. Young, innocent eyes. Come, hurry, hurry. And at that point, the wind turned into snow. And it picked up. It's getting cold. And they walked deep into the woods, deep into the woods. When they looked around, it was a blanket of snow. Everywhere they saw was blinding white for the little bit that they could see. The sun was becoming the night. They couldn't see anything. They were running around looking, and they were in trouble. The old man was getting older by the day. He couldn't handle it. It was getting cold, and he was getting weak. The young man was not that much better. And he sat there, and he said, we've got to find shelter. We have to find something, but there's nothing around. Can you see anything? <gasps> No, I can't, but somehow, out of a glint of light, there was a little hut. It had one small door. They had no idea who lived there, but they said, it's an emergency. We must go. I don't even know if I can make it. Hurry. And the young man took the old man by the arm, and he moved him inside the little two-matted hut. And immediately, they shut the door. <clears throat> They tried to lock it, but the wind kept coming in. It was hard. They pushed. They pushed. They found whatever they could. They put it up against the door, but it kept moving back and forth and back and forth. And the old man had had enough. He was tired. He'd worked an entire day, and he said, I need to rest. My bones are weary. There's no blankets here. I'll just go over to the side there. And the younger man said, well, all right, I'll, I'll try more with this door. And soon the old man was asleep. And the young man, he was getting tired. And the old man was asleep. And the young man, he was getting tired and more tired to the point that he was nodding off. He was going to keep his eyes open just a little, and he had it just a little, when all of a sudden that door <clears throat> flew open. And inside appeared a woman. Her skin was white like the snow. Her eyes were red, and she had long black hair and long fingernails. And she did not walk to the old man, but she glided to the old man as though she could sift into the snow. And with that one hand, she picked up that old man like it was nothing. 
And she looked into the eyes of that old man and she said, I can see there is little life in you. So I will take what is left. And she breathed. And as she breathed, his breath left into her. The young man sat there, and he was scared. He was frightened. He looked, and, and the old man had just withered away as though he was nothing. And she looked, and she said, ha, 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 I almost missed you. <laughs> and lifted like it was nothing. And she looked into his eyes. What is this? You have much life. I can see you are attractive. <laughs> well, <laughs> he looked. She said, there's something about you, something that just means I have to wait. I cannot. I will not. And she lifted him gently down to the ground. And she looked at him. She said, but I tell you this, and I tell you this now. Heed my warning. If you tell anyone what you have seen here, I will come back and do what I was supposed to do, whether it was part of nature or not. <laughs> And she glided out. And the young man, he was frightened. He was scared. He was shivering. He was weak. He was vulnerable. He didn't know what to do. Here was the lifeless body of his mentor. And the snow was still going. He stayed with that body for seven days. Nothing to eat, just looking at the empty eyes of the old man. It was too cold to bury him when the snow let up. He opened the door and he walked till he finally found a place that was familiar. There was supposed to be a ferry to take him across, but it wasn't there. He had to wait two more days. And all he could remember was who was lifeless in that small hut. And when he was walking back, he did look back. And then maybe it was a trick on his eyes, but he didn't see that hut anymore. Finally, the fairy came, and, and the ferryman looked over, and, and he handed a, a one coin that he had, but he couldn't speak. He was silent for what he saw. And in the emptiness of the water, he went back to take care of his mother. For you see, he did that. He cut the firewood. That's how they made a living. She was older, and she took care. He took care of her every day. One day, it took him a long time, but he was able to go back to the woods. And when he went back into the woods, he walked in and he saw a little woman, barely a woman, a small girl, had long black hair, and their eyes met, even from afar. And there was doe-like eyes from her. And she said, I, I'm lost. I, I was trying to go to my uncle. I don't know him that well, but I'm, I'm, I have no other place to go. I'm cold. Could you tell me? And she named the town. It was very close, but also very far away. For you see, his heart was growing. 
And she want, he wanted her to stay. And so he said, could you just stay and meet my mother? And, and we'll feed you and, 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 and you can be on your way. I'll be sure to tell you. And she said, I don't know. He says, my mother would love to meet you. And we don't get too many guests. It's been a hard winter. Please. And so the mother met the daughter and looked over and said, who are you? He said, well, my mother and father, they're, they're no longer. And, and I am looking for my uncle. And he lives very far away. He said, well, then you must stay the night. And they stayed all night, and they had rice, and they told stories, and they sang songs, and they had a wonderful time. And while she was there, she said, well, I, I think maybe it's still cold, and I'll stay another day. And she stayed another day, and another day, and a week, and a month. And he fell more in love. And his older mother was getting sick. And they took care of her together. And at her last words, she looked over and said, you two look happy together. And it was the last words. And it was almost like it was his mother's wish and she certainly wasn't saying no to that wish. And they married. And they had 10 children, a large family. And they laughed. And they sang songs. And he went out and cut the wood. And one day, right before winter, she was sitting in a chair, rocking their youngest. And she got up and put him in the crib. And she picked up a sewing needle. And she began to sew because she was going to sew something for the kid's feet. And went back and forth. And, and the woodman looked over and said, just the way that you're sitting there, just the way that you're sitting there reminds me. I can hardly remember it. It was years and years ago. And she said, what? What are you talking about, dear? She said, I remember it. It was, it was a long time ago. I was in the woods. I, I had an old master, and he was a good woodcutter. And he said, well, tell me more, dear. And he said, well, he was a wonderful man. And, and we went into the woods, and he began to tell him the story and told them how cold he was and in the hut. And they said, and I was scared. Why were you scared, dear? And she began to move her needle just a little bit quicker. Why were you scared? He said, because there was a, it was such a long time ago. There was a woman. She, she wasn't a woman. She had long fingernails, black hair that went down to her waist. And she glided up like the snow. And she picked him up, and he said, and then what happened? He said, and he picked him up, and he breathed, and she said, ah. And her fingernails began to grow. And she dropped her knitting. And she said, I told you never to speak of that. I told you what I would do. And her eyes turned red like fire. And she stood up and she took up the entire space of the room. And she picked him up like it was nothing and held him there and said, now I must do what I said I would do. <laughs> And she took one giant breath. That snow woman took one giant breath. And he was losing. And he was trying to struggle. When out of another room, we heard babies crying. What is that? And she looked over and she knew full well what that, that was. 
It was her own children. She looked at the doe-eyed man, and she said, I will. And the babies began to cry even more. And she said, their blood is in me. I will not leave them without a father. But mark my words, you will not harm one of those children. If you do, I will be back. And she glided. And that man never saw her again. And they were playing in the snow. She would listen. He would listen. The kids would listen. And they would hear almost like the snow was crying, like a mother who had lost her children. The snow 